COVID-19 vaccination and our Sabah experience. As a coordinator of this entire program for the state of Sabah, we, we are already faced with a big challenge, how to vaccinate 2.7 million, 5 million adult population, and not only that, which progress even for the adolescent age. The state health facilities were unable to cope with it. So at that time, a combined with the state government and the all the agencies of the government agencies were involved in forming a task force called COVID Immunization Task Force. And with that, we started the entire process of the COVID vaccination program from March 2021 onwards. Looking at this slide, then you can see that it progressed very slowly in the initial phases, but picked up from the months of July, August and September. If you're looking carefully at the slides, you can see the darker green slides, which symbolizes, signifies those who have completed the vaccination. And the lighter green, which signifies those who had the first dose of vaccination. Now, when we started this in March, we went through a couple of phases. First, the phase is being the phase for the frontliners, both the healthcare provider and non-healthcare provider as frontliners. Now, after this process, we went through the phase for the elderly and those with comorbid medical problems. After that, as we progressed on, we had the adolescent uh, vaccination program, which was started on the 16th of September in the state of Sabah. Next, after that, in the month of October 2021, it progressed. We started off with the booster vaccination program. Now, the two peaks that you're seeing initially in August, progressively, and there are another two peaks subsequently, and those correlates with our vaccination program for the adolescent and the booster program. Challenges in Sabah are unique. The Malaysian government had developed a platform for registration for vaccination using a platform called MySajatra. MySajatra, which is linked to the vaccination program through a process called MyVas. Now, from the beginning of our vaccination program, the government has insisted it is purely voluntary and it is free for all citizens and non-citizens in, in Malaysia. So, in April 2021, we had noticed that the registration number in Sabah is only 28% of the adult population. That is remarkably low. The problem is that many people did not register because they had poor internet connectivity or even they do not have proper smartphones to use it for registration. So what we needed to do in this setting is that we had to have collaboration with all government agencies and non-government agencies, both private and public sector, in providing line listing, which we had used it for the vaccination program. Now, this is an important process in increasing the vaccination coverage. Now, we also notice that in many centers, the vaccination, vaccine levels dropped markedly. Somewhere in the late part of July, we noticed that it had been slowed down. So we have allowed people to walk in subsequently in the months of August onwards for the vaccination program. And we opened it not only for the Malaysians initially, but we had opened to the non-Malaysians, those documented and those who are undocumented. This allows a better uh, spread of our vaccination program. Now, we, when we walk in, was allowed to, to cater for the general public. Our vaccination centers, the 181 vaccination centers, 
allow people to walk in any time of the day for the vaccination to be done. This make improved our vaccination pro progress in the months of August and in September. From the beginning itself, during this COVID outbreak, people have come up with various theories, conspiracy theory, and so on and so forth. People were saying that it was a big pharma involvement in this vaccination process. But again, we were trying to cater to this. We had to challenge. This was our challenge. How to counter every uh, issues that the public were addressing. So we had a groups of myth busters, groups who are tackling every anti-vax issues. Mainly, I will notice in Sabah, it is not a hardcore vaccine anti-vaxxers, but main, many of them are just hesitant to the vaccination program. But I like to highlight that at present, we need to protect the elderly and all through the booster shots, as we noted the waning of antibodies levels, thus resulting in breakthrough infection. The infective rate will drop when the vaccination rate increases. It is especially true for the Pfizer and AZ vaccine. The vaccination program is important as there is 11 times less chance of getting complications of the disease in, in those who are vaccinated. So we are encouraging more people to take the vaccination because the morbidity and mortality, or the mortality or the complications are com markedly reduced among those who are vaccinated. We have here some pictures of outreach in Sabah. If you can see, the challenges of Sabah is different from many other states in Malaysia. I show you pictures of our outreach into the various areas. Some are the uh, squatter areas, the uh, houses that are on water or kampung air, and some are in a far out areas, right in the middle of estates and so on and so forth. Now, the lessons learned. We found that there is no one model that fits all. We have 26 districts in Sabah, and they, there is never one model that fits every district. Every district had its had to have its own strategy. How to approach the population? How to reach the far out areas? In fact, initially we had only two types of vaccine. That is the Pfizer vaccine and the CoronaVax vaccine, which is Sinovac. And by giving this vaccine, we had to give them two doses. So it means that we had to go to this far out areas twice. So to counter this, we had this single dose vaccines were made available for Sabah. In fact, Sabah was the first state to get the entire shipment of a single dose vaccine compared to other states in Malaysia. Now, with a single dose vaccine, we are able to vaccinate and give the coverage rates of coverage higher compared to uh, the just doing two doses. Now, we need the help of all the agencies. In fact, many agencies came forward which we never expected prior to this. For example, if a vaccinee needed to go to a, a vaccination center by themselves, it would have cost a pretty sum to just to make it to the vaccination. And if they have to go twice, they will take certain am amount of finance to reach the vaccination center. Now, with the help of the private sector to provide transport, we had NGOs providing transport to the vaccination center. And not only that, we had outreaches to these places that are far out. And by that, people need not need to travel. So interagency support, not only in the resource sharing, but sharing of data. In fact, almost every government agency and private agencies have a set of data that will be helpful in our vaccination program. Now, many of our data information 
that we had to convey to the public has changed the process from the beginning of February to even right up till now. The process has changed. For example, in February, we were not planning to vaccinate the pregnant woman at all during the antenatal period. But then as the scientific data changed in days to come, we found that we can vaccinate the pregnant women between 14 weeks and 33 weeks. That was the info at that time in the months of June and July. By the time of August, we have finally found out that the data that we had was that we can vaccinate pregnancy regardless of their gestation age. Now, this is very important to be conveyed to the public. If any delay in our information to the public, the strategy changes accordingly. So, everyone plays a part in this COVID pandemic. Three C's and three W's. What does three C stands for? Yes, avoid crowded places, avoid close contact, avoid closed environments. Three W's and we must practice three W's. That is wear a mask, watch your distance and wash your hands regularly. Now with that experience, where does Sabah stand in the whole picture? As of 28th of November 2021, there is still 23% of our population, adult population, not vaccinated. There is about 29%, about 29% uh, of our adolescent population not vaccinated. Now, this is a big challenge still. Everyone needs to pay a part. If not, we will be and because of the process now, it is allowed voluntarily. We encourage more people to take up the vaccination because the more people vaccinated, the infectivity rate drops. And this improves our really, really leading a fairly normal life compared to before. The fight goes on. Please take the vaccine. Thank you.